Hey gang, in this video, I want to show you something everybody needs to know how to do. Whether you're 15, 50, or 80, man or woman, it doesn't matter. You need to know how to do this. So call your mama, call your friends, call your neighbors, call your ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend. I don't care who you call, call them all. Tell them to watch this video. Because in this video, I want to show you how to cook the very best steak you've ever had on a charcoal grill. And for you gas grillers out there, don't go anywhere. There's plenty of tips and tricks in the video that translate from charcoal to gas and vice versa. So don't go anywhere. I want to show you how to do this right now. So we have a few decisions to make before we get going. First is what kind of grill we're going to use and why we're using that kind of grill. Next would be what kind of steak we're going to cook and why we're cooking that kind of steak. Number three would be how do we season and prepare that steak and get it ready for the grill. Number four would be how do we start our grill? What, what are we going to use for a fire source? Number five would be how do we cook it? Is there a method? What method are you going to use to cook it? And number six would be how do we know when it's done? If there was a number seven it would be how do we eat it? But if you don't know how to eat it, you're watching the wrong video. We'll get started with how to choose the grill you want to use. So what kind of grill are we going to use? Well, that's a great question. And it's one I can answer very easily for me. There's no, no question about it. It's the Weber Kettle. Weber Kettle, uh, actually I'll put a link to a video right here that shows you a ton of different accessories you can use with it. And that's not even all of them by any means. It's just a video I made showing a, a number of them that you can, you can make it to a, a rotisserie, a smoker, to a pizza. There's just so many different things you can do with Weber Kettle that makes it the most versatile, most used, the most common, most popular grill, hands down, across the country. Um, I will put a link in the description below to Amazon links to show you the different grills that are out there, different varieties of the Weber Kettle. The one I have is called the Performer Deluxe. There's other ones that are nowhere near as expensive as this one that gets you in the game. Now, you want to go ahead and subscribe to my channel because in a couple of weeks I'm going to put a video out that's going to be a great video, a fun video, uh, where I'll show you how to get into this game a lot cheaper than having to buy brand new stuff. So hang with me, subscribe to the channel, and watch that video when it comes out. You'll be glad you did so but Weber kettle hands down is the best option for me that's what I use every time that's what we're going to use today on our steak so our next decision to make is what kind of steak we're going to cook we're we going to cook a fillet a ribeye a New York strip well for me again very easy answer we're going to do a ribeye ribeye is the most popular most common steak that, that people grill and that's for a reason they're a fantastic piece of meat uh, we're going to do prime grade now there's just so you know the USD has three levels of steaks they got prime choice and select and the way I remember that is PCs like a computer PCS prime choice select if select's all you can afford, that's what I would go with. Because if you can afford choice at all, get choice. And if you can afford prime, get prime. There's a big difference in the three. Uh, prime being just fantastically much better. So uh, if you can do that, great. If you can get choice, that's what you get. If you get select, that's what you get. But I would probably just hold your money till you can save your money till you can get at least a choice. The selects are just not good. They're full of grizzle and not, not enjoyable at all. So at least get a choice. Now, ours are going to be an inch thick. I wanted to be an inch and a half, but all the store had today was inch, uh, and they had nothing else that they could cut. Everything's already cut. So, nonetheless, we're stuck with the inch thick ribeyes that are prime graded. We'll take a look at them now. Look how good they look. So, guys, here's our two steaks we're going to do. These are actually, I said, like inch thick ribeyes, prime grade ribeyes. Now, when you're looking for steaks and you're looking at ribeyes in the grocery store, guys, you're looking for a couple of things. One is this spinalis right here. To me, that's the best part of this whole steak is these, the spinalis, the top, the rib cap, if you will. That is probably the best part of the steak. It's the most tender and juicy and, and flavorful piece of meat on the whole ribeye. The second is the, the eye of the ribeye, which is also called the longissimus, this section here. This is where you look for your marbling. You'll see all the white streaks in here. That's actually just fat that's going to render out and become juice on our steak, and that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for a really good spinalis, as well as a nice longissimus with some good marbling in there, or they call it the eye of the steak, uh, eye of the ribeye. I'm today going to use actually the um, uh, a rub called Killer Hogs uh, AP seasoning. Hope you can see that. Hope it's not making it blurry. Uh, AP seasoning from Killer Hogs. It's Malcolm Reed's uh, seasoning. I love this seasoning. It's salt, pepper, garlic, and you can make your own. I just like the, this one really well. It does a really good job. So I'm going to season this up right now, and on both sides and the, the edges as well. I'll get both sides just a good coating on both sides. I don't do anything else but this. A lot of people add other seasonings too. I don't. This is all I do. Salt, pepper, garlic. I'm a very traditionalist when it comes to that. I love the flavoring that you get out of this. I think it does a really good job. I can smell it already. It just smells so good. Uh, that garlic powder especially. So then I'll take the edges and try to dab the edges up and get them well seasoned as well. If I can, I'll just add some more to it. It's no big deal. A little windy out here, so I'm having to try to watch what I do with the, with the rub. I don't want it going all over the driveway. It's not going to help me any. Um, so there we go. We got them both seasoned up there. 
and ready to go. Spinalis, Longissimus, and some people will trim these fat caps off. I don't really do that. That's something a lot of people do. I just I let the fat cap do what it's supposed to do and give us some, we'll, we'll, we'll actually sear that off as well. Now guys, here's one of the biggest secrets I have when it comes to cooking steaks and what makes, I think, a, the greatest steak you'll make on charcoal grill. I will not put these steaks back in the fridge. They'll sit out like this for the next hour to an hour and maybe 15, 20 minutes. Now the USDA says you can leave them out as long as two hours uncooked on your countertop at room temperature for up to two hours. I'll be an hour, hour and 15 because I'm gonna start my grill, get the charcoal going, show you guys what's going on, how that goes. It'll take an hour to probably an hour and a half for me to get all this done, pay camera work, etc. cetera, uh, to get it all done. But an hour to an hour and a half, I'd leave it at least an hour, guys. Um, that makes it so much more uh, easy to cook makes it cook quicker and makes it much more tender. That's one thing you chart your gas grill guys can do. One tip is you can leave it sitting out for a while before you put it on your grill. That'll make it a lot more tender. I can't, can't be much with the taste, but I can help you with the tenderness of it. If you leave it sitting out for a good hour to hour and a half uncovered on your countertop in your house. I wouldn't leave it out here, you know, in the sun, but definitely in your counter um, at room temperature. Man, it's gonna be a great steak when you do that. So that's one of the biggest tips I have to making a great steak is make sure you leave it sitting out for a good while. So I'll be back in a minute. We'll show you how we get this, the grill going. That's our next step is how do we start our grill. So I'll show you how we do that. All right, folks, here is the three most important parts of your charcoal lighting experience. Number one is B&B &B charcoal. That's what I always choose. I love B&B &B charcoal. And you're gonna use briquettes because briquettes burn at a more consistent, even temperature than lump charcoal does. And this has got oak in it, which is, I'm, I'm a big fan of oak. As you maybe heard me say in other videos, I love post oak and this has got oak in the charcoal. Second is the charcoal, but the charcoal basket or chimney you see on the right hand side of your screen. That is uh, what you'll put the charcoal in, and then down here at the bottom are the, the. I'll show you here. These are lighter cubes, as you can probably see. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I'll pull one out and let you see that. Let me go ahead and do that for you. We'll go ahead and get this going. We will put one in here. And next, I'll put my chimney over top of little cube. I'll lift it up in a second. I have to lift it up to light it. But that's how it goes. I'll pour charcoal in there. I'm not going to fill the whole thing up. I'm going to fill about halfway up. Set this down. Now we'll go and get this lit and get our charcoal started. Now what I'm gonna do guys, is I'm gonna get this charcoal going, get it ashed over, you know, start it up, and pour it into this basket. I wanna create two zones of cooking. There's gonna be a hot zone over here where this basket of charcoal is, and this that'll be just an indirect cook, so it'll be much cooler, more of a baking type wheel, if you will, but it's getting that good smoke flavor and oak flavor onto the meat while it's in the, in the kettle here. So I would equate this to being like on your gas grill, firing up one side and turn the other one up at very, very low on the other side, but turn this side up pretty hot. Uh, let it go, let it cook across the indirectly in the gas grill as well. Same principle. They're a wonderful addition to getting things started. Um, even on a, on a camping trip, they're wonderful for that. Even get a fire going there uh, if you can't get it otherwise. But there we go, guys. We got the charcoal going. I'll bring you back when it's time to pour them into the basket once we get these going and we'll go from there. Okay guys, we got our charcoals are ready. Now I've realized I've probably got way too many charcoals, but we'll pour some in there. And if we have too many, we'll just leave the rest in the chimney. That's probably plenty good enough right there. We'll get our grate and put it on now. Let the temperature get up to temperature about 225, 250. Now our principle here is we're gonna put our steaks on this side, the cool zone, that's the hot zone, this is the cool zone. We'll let it stay over here until it gets to about 90 degrees. Then we'll flip them and let them stay there about 120, 125. And then we'll add more charcoal and get our basket really good and hot and we'll slide the steaks over to sear them. So I do what's called a reverse sear as opposed to a, a sear on the front end. Now I'm gonna put this thermometer in here as well, just so I can have an idea of what the temperature is. We'll close it up and we'll get to 225, 250 in that range. It'll take probably 30 minutes of doing that, maybe even 40. This is about an inch thick steak, so maybe 30 to 40 minutes of cooking. Um, I'll bring you back when it's, uh, if I think about it, we'll bring you back when we flip it at 90 degrees. If not, I'll bring you back, especially when it's time to sear them. 
So there's our steaks, guys. They look, you can probably see the shimmer on there for the moisture has been pulled out by that salt, pepper, garlic mixture. And that's what you want. You get that good dissolving of that salt, pepper, garlic, and have it kind of soak back into the steaks. Uh, ideally, we have this overnight doing that. We don't have that kind of time, though. That's ideal. This is real world. And sometimes you get ideal. Sometimes it works out where you can do that. But uh, we don't have that time today. We had to just go ahead and put it on there and let it sit for a while. It's been probably about an hour and 10 minutes. I uh, waited a while for sort of the charcoal and that kind of thing, but now it's been about a little over an hour, so we're going to go ahead get them on. Temperature's really good, so we'll go from there. We'll put them on now. Lid off. Stick there. Right here. Have that fat cap kind of buffered a little bit. Now we'll cover back up and let her cook. Again, 225, 250, preferably around 225, maybe 250 to be fine. Either one of those two is fine in that range. Uh, we got our thermometer and we're checking the temperature on that. We will go from there, guys. Back, hopefully, when we go to flip it, hope I remember, guys, 90 degrees, we'll, we'll flip it and I'll, uh, I'll check back with you guys then. Something I neglected to tell you guys was make sure when you, if you're using whatever kettle, that you have the damper, the top damper over the steaks. So the charcoal and the flavoring and the smoke comes out of the charcoal box basket across the steaks and then out the vent. That way you get the benefit of that extra flavor and smoke flavor that you're wanting to get in the first place. That really helps to do that. Okay guys, we're gonna check our temperature. I think it's a little hotter than we wanted it to get. It's, uh, that one reads 91, 94 in that range. And this one reads 97. It's a little warmer, it's okay though. No big deal, we want to tame it at 90. 97 is fine. Go ahead and turn these over now. Feel for them. Well, they feel, feel very tender, obviously. <laughs> They're nowhere near cooked, of course, so we'll turn them around here. Gosh, they feel tender. They're going to be great steaks, guys. They feel wonderful. Fat's rendering right there really well. Man, looking good. We were, got a little hot at one point, got about 260, which is not the end of the world. Again, no big deal. I cooled it back down some. We'll close it up now. Now we're going to wait till it gets about 125. When it gets to 125, we'll know that we're getting time to take it off. Like I said, guys, we're gonna wait till they get to about 125, roughly 122, 125 degrees internal. Pull them off, let them rest for a couple minutes because they're gonna you know, carry over cook up to probably 132, 134. And while it's doing that, we'll add more charcoal and get that flame really built up and the heat really built up so we can put the steaks back on slide them over on top of that charcoal basket and get a good sear on both sides on both steaks. Probably a minute, minute and a half each side. We'll play it by ear and see how it goes. But then we'll let them rest for about 10 minutes and slice into them and see how they look. They should, uh, they should be great. They're feeling really good. So, and for the record, that post you see back there that's tilted, yeah, you didn't see that. Ain't no post tilted back there. My wife doesn't know about that. I'm not in trouble. I'm the boss when she ain't here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll fix it soon. Back when we're ready to see her, guys. Okay, guys, we're gonna check this temperature, see how they're doing. If we can see that temperature gauge there, we'll go all the way through. 126, 125. We're gonna pull these off now, and we're gonna add some charcoal to that basket over there, shake out that charcoal a little bit, to add, a bas add some to the basket, get it really good and hot, and put these back on and sear them off. We'll take these off here. them rest a little bit we're gonna take glove here set up Get some charcoal just drop it in there I should have shaken it a little bit but doesn't take much just enough to get it going again. I'll we'll have to wait a few minutes for that airflow to kick in and get it going. When it does, we'll know it. It's smoking pretty good. So we'll come back whenever we're ready to put them on there and get them seated, guys. Just be back in a few minutes. Hey guys, I want to jump back on here and show you these thermometers and talk about these thermometers I'm using. This is actually a Thermapin 1 by Thermaworks. I have a link in the description below. But these things are a big benefit to you out here cooking. Uh, you'll know the temperature of your internal temperature of your meat, when to turn things, when to get things off. That's how you know when it's done is by temperature, especially when you're grilling. When you're smoking, it's more by, by feel, by uh, probe tender, that kind of thing. But when you're grilling, it's definitely going to be more so temperature related. 
So we're looking at this 125 mark, for example. We know that it's time to pull it off and let it rest and let the temperature go up some and sear them after that. That's how we know because we use Thermopin 1 or a digital thermometer. You can use any one of these you want. This one's like I say, 30 or 40 bucks. There's cheaper ones. Just use the link to get to this and then look around on Amazon and find something else you might want to get, but you need one of these for sure. The other thing is this ink burn thermometer. This one's pretty cool too. This one has four outlets for four different probes. Now you can use it for ambient temperature, which is what I'm doing now for this kettle. But it also does a great job with the meat temperature internal as well. So you can keep up with it, especially when you're smoking something. For those long cooks, you can put a thermometer in there and let it sit and it'll tell you the whole time what your temperature is internal. And it's Bluetooth, so you can put it on your phone and look at your phone and see what you can go in the house and watch the game and see your temperatures at the same time. It's kind of nice. So this one's Inkbird. Again, a link in the description. There's probably cheaper ones, but this was somewhere to start, somewhere to, something for you to look at and go from there. So y'all check them out and see what you think. I'll need one of these for sure and the other one too. Make sure you get one. All right, guys, we got a good flame here. We'll put this steak on. Get one of them on here going and press it down. Get a good press on that so we let it sear there. So those juices will fly in there and drop into there. The fat will as it renders out and get more flame up. So we'll see this one for a minute, minute and a half, something like that, and see how it goes. We'll check it on it. I don't have a watch. I'm just watching and see, guys. So um, we'll watch this one first. I won't make you watch both of them the whole way through. We'll watch this one, see how it goes, and so you have an idea of how long you have to wait. What you're gonna get there. Used to be a big thing to get these hash marks, uh, sear marks on the steak. Not such a big deal anymore. A lot of times actually people do a cold sear where they have the, the grates cold before they put it on there. Um, so it's kind of, a, kind of a fad that's kind of gone to the side now to have those hash marks. Not a big deal anymore as it used to be. getting there looking really good Make sure this eye gets oh yeah look at that guys it looks fantastic doesn't it Press this side down, let it sear real well too. Let it get a good connection to the grate as well. Looking good guys. We get that one done. I'll put this one on. It looks good. All right. There's our completed steaks, guys. They are finished. They're going to rest there for um, about five or ten minutes. Then I'll take them over the cutting board and we'll cut on them and see how they do. See how they look. Get a big taste. Back shortly. All right, guys. My wife took her steak and ran. So we've got this one. We're going to cut open and check it out. See how it did. Oh gosh, it's just like, man, it's just like butter. Oh gosh, look at that. Very well cooked, perfectly. I don't know if you can tell by the light in here, it's kind of, the shade out here is kind of rough. The camera started getting hot, but anyway, perfectly done. Um, let's take a little bite here and see how we do. Let's get us a cut on the bias here. And, oh my gosh, it's like freaking butter, man. Look at that. No. Cheers, guys. Let's see how it goes. Mmm. That is perfect. Oh my goodness. So tender and juicy. Mmm. Just melted in my mouth. 
fantastic piece of steak. So guys, I hope you got something out of this. Hope you realize how easy it is to do these steaks. And again, in a couple weeks, I have a video out showing you how cheap you can get into the Weber kettle and all the different things you can do with it. But for today, I hope you enjoyed our steak video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you can benefit from it and you can do something with it. Um, as far as on a gas grill or your own, your own grill, you've got it home now, whether it's a Weber kettle or not. So guys, we sure would appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to our channel. I hope you can gain something out of this channel as a whole. And uh, like I always say, I'm not sure where you'll be, but I know where you'll find me. I'll meet you at the smoker. See you next time, guys.